So I decided to watch the new Minions movie, The Rise of Gru. I don't entirely know why. I think I was just craving some kind of simplicity. My head felt like it's trying to explode out of my skull for the past week because of these like constant weather changes. And sometimes you just long for the experience of Steve Carell's voice pitched tones with a little accent while he's being followed around by a bunch of floppy little banana obsessed pill looking things. It also helps that there's an entire meme movement, a news cycle dedicated to it currently, so why not? No, I didn't go in this blazer getup. I'm not a teenager. I just thought the video provided a good blazer opportunity, which I always appreciate. Not in this heat though, but we will persist. So while I will quickly go through the movie later on for those who actually want to know what happened, uh, it's not the main focus of this. I was just really interested in the cultural phenomenon, but main points, uh, it's, it's pretty cute. It's no despicable me, but it's a pretty solid kids movie that shouldn't make parents want to put their heads through a wall. And at the end of the day, that's the best thing you can ask for. I think the villain group of the movie is pretty bland, but it's unfortunate because they, they had a pretty decent platform to work off of. I really only remember the leader uh, because she's the leader, and the nun, because there was something deeply amusing to me about the super villain nun. Also found out she was voiced by Lucy Lawless, who was a badass. I don't remember her saying anything except for like a couple exclamations, but like, hell yeah. But the movie really is more about Gru realizing his appreciation for the minions and how much they care for him. Again, no despicable me, but I sat myself through the first minions movie and oh no. As expected, the rise of Gru tells the story of young Gru trying to find his place in villain society. As all 11 year olds do. He gets in a bit over his head and his minions have to rush to save the day. It's simple, short, sweet, and what you expect from a kid's movie. Also, the soundtrack was causing a lot of buzz because it's just loaded with popular artists, like a lot of hip musicians covering 60s and 70s classics. And that should be a recipe for success, but it's uh, it's not really that good. It's like they just worried about getting the artist signed on instead of actually taking the time to make the covers good, but they mostly work in the movie. So again, the movie itself is not the main focus of this, even though we will talk about it. What I'm here for is the memes. This has been a really fascinating year for theatrical releases and social media influence, and how corporations try to interpret and use that influence, which is really just a long way of saying, I wanna talk about the difference between the outcomes of the Morbius movement and the Minions movement. Movement. There's some very basic reasons, and then there's just all the general studio stupidity contributing, but uh, first off, what the hell is going on with the gentle minions? But first, first, a message from today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark VPN has thousands of different server locations all around the world that you can quickly connect to across all your devices with one account and open up your online experience. So what does that mean? Well, I've been trying to catch up on the best shows and movies of the year because we're at the midway point. So I started watching Under the Banner of Heaven on Disney Plus because my boy Andrew is in it, only to find out that they weren't caught up on all the episodes. The the internet says it is seven episodes long, and yet Disney Plus only had five. Why, Disney, you own the station it premiered on? But it's fine, I'm fine, because all I had to do was pop on Surfshark VPN, connect to a US server, take myself over to Hulu, and watch the final two episodes of the show. And I'm sure some variation of this situation has happened to you, so let Surfshark solve that problem. It's super fast, secure, blocks unwanted ads, and if you use code JEDI, you can save a whopping 83% Plus, get three months free. And if that wasn't good enough, they offer a 30 day back money guarantee if you are not completely satisfied. So make sure to click the link in the description down below to try out Surfshark for yourself. So what's going on with Minions 2 The Rise of Gru? If you hadn't noticed, there are swarms of teenagers lining up to see Minions wearing full suits known as the Gentle Minions Movement. Sometime in June, people started joking online about showing up to the movies wearing suits, but it's genuinely shocking how widespread it got. I've recognized people that I knew more back in my like gaming and esports days taking part in this. I'm seeing videos from theaters all around the world. I asked on Twitter if any theater workers following me had stories and someone said it had even reached multiple and at that point, I was already shocked that it was happening around where I live. To the point of people noticing without the context. So we're not talking like a few friends rocking up in suits, making it look like they bailed on prom or their missionary work. We're talking enough kids to be recognizable as unusual. I'm sure this movie would have done fine otherwise, but there is no denying
denying that this is bringing people out to theaters to see something they absolutely would not have otherwise. Myself included. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of them have soft spots from seeing Despicable Me as children, and this one is pretty decent. Like, I'm sure there were some that were genuinely excited to see it. But Minions as a thing have been so destroyed and overused over the years. Like, you can't go on Facebook without scrolling past some kind of bad boomer joke, motivational quote, or quirky I'm not like the other people image with a random Minion slapped on it. I think it's almost worse when there's some kind of actual good comment or joke on the picture, and then they just shove a Minion on there unironically. And before they got overused, they were cute and fun. And I think this movie makes them cute again, and honestly, it's a little bit of the movement that makes them fun again. But I feel confident in saying that this is at least 90% fueled by memes and not remotely a genuine desire to see the movie. And that's fine. Seems like a harmless, goofy little thing that was making some people smile, helping theaters sell some popcorn, getting people out to the movies. But as always, some people had to ruin it. Now you'd expect a coordinated group to be a little bit louder, especially when they're teenagers, a little bit rowdier, making the minions feel a little bit more like a major Marvel premiere. No issue there in my mind. You wanna clap at the Universal logo, cheer a bit, as obnoxious as that can be to some people with the right crowd, that is a good time. I can imagine parents with young children being a bit intimidated and even angry at certain screenings, but for the most part, I think people have been well-intentioned and mostly well-behaved in keeping it to the evening showings. Until reports started coming out about rowdy behavior in theaters to the point that some are banning teens from showing up in suits unless they have a parent present, kicking people out, refunding tickets, issuing warnings before the screenings, and sadly the one thing that's really gonna make teenagers want to act out is telling them not to. People were throwing Wait, bananas. At first I thought this behavior was probably fairly isolated, just a handful of cases, and I think the really serious stuff likely is. But it wasn't just an increased in rowdiness and spilled popcorn. A lot of people have been bringing bananas, and some of those people, instead of eating them or just keeping them as a prop, they were smushing them into the floors, the carpeting, the seats, throwing them. At least one story has already come out that a screen has banana damage on it now, and it's really hard and expensive to clean these suckers, so that might actually be a great deal of damage. This is not a showing of a Rocky Horror Picture Show. No one gave you the okay to start chucking bananas and like, come on. I'm seeing videos of people starting fights, whole theaters just like singing and partying instead of watching, people throwing food, cops being called. And if you book the whole theater and don't cause damage or fight, sure, have fun, everyone's on the same page, no one cares if you decide you wanna dance and sing instead of actually watching the movie. But doing it when there are other people around and like families and kids, like that's just fucking rude, man. Sorry, I had to go watch Thor. <laughs> Weird lighting now. And the people being respectful makes sense. It is the gentle minions movement. Enjoy the meme, but be as respectful as your attire suggests. So for all the people out there who went and just had a good time, did some clapping, did a little bit of cheering, or just sat there, hell yeah. I hope you had a blast and that definitely seems to be a majority of you. But sadly, a lot of the more negative behavior has led to theaters actually having to like shut down some of these screenings, give out mass refunds, stories about kids crying because they couldn't watch the movie. So obviously other than the people being shitheads, I just think this was like really funny that it didn't stay an online meme or even just like a handful of small groups taking part. This was people everywhere committing to an outing that cost money and involved dressing up and it wasn't even prom. And there wasn't some kind of larger connected purpose to lead to this spreading worldwide. This is just people wanting to take part in a meme and document themselves doing it. But that brings us to the big question. What made this different than Morbius? So I talked about Morbius right when it came out before the memes really went in full swing, but they were brewing by the time I posted. Started seeing the variations on the, there's no denying that Morbius is the most movie you will ever seen this year. It has acting and sound and special effects definitely a movie. Then the Morbin time settled in and it was wildfire. There were social media posts everywhere as the Rotten Tomato ratings were getting flooded with five-star reviews, but no one was actually going to watch it. I think the only person who watched Morbius for the memes was Eddie Burback, and he did it five days in a row, but he didn't actually buy tickets to Morbius, which is the only correct course of action. Now, in both of these situations, these studios got in on the action. And I think that one main difference is that Minions had a strong pre-movement. Like, people were already clowning on Morbius before it came out. It was delayed nonstop for ages, and then they decided to release it on April Fools. It felt like a last ditch effort to get people to turn up as a joke. But with Minions, it was a direct plan to see it with an objective that would be noticeable. It looks like I have the, like the raccoon hair that the scene kids did. Am I aging myself here? The scene kids with the raccoon. <laughs> it even had its own song called Rich Minion created by Yeet for the occasion. And the social media pages were endorsing the movement too. I call my name. I call my name. 
We get the official Minions account saying, Bob Speed, you gentle Minions, and encouraging the movie the day it released. So yeah, I think the gentle Minion things just really came down to people being stoked at being a part of something, and then like the snowball effect keeping it going when more and more people wanted to get in on it, and then it's like already a long weekend. And maybe we'll see it in, into this weekend if it doesn't get shut down by all the theaters and people aren't too busy watching Thor which was fine. And other than a couple social posts, Universal didn't actually have to do shit. Which brings us back to Morbius and Sony's many attempts at trying to be in on the joke. Now, first clear major difference is that Morbius was ass. It was a mess, it felt like it was missing scenes, it has a super abrupt ending, bad editing, and a horrible fucking performance out of Jared Leto, and what a bland fucking character Michael Morbius is. Matt Smith only provided a little bit of joy with his shenanigans, and other than some of these cool color waves, it looked like shit. It felt like a Cliff Notes movie, and it wasn't like funny or over the top enough to make it an ironic theater going experience. Like as much as I hate cats and never want to be subjected to it again in my life, I can at least understand why some people were like, I'm gonna hate watch this movie for the rest of my life. Morbius though, this should have just like fizzled out into the wind like the trash it is. So despite Morbin time, fake box office result, and hashtag Morbius sweep, that did not translate to actual results. Because that was part of the joke. If the movie actually started making bank or had any genuine critical and fan appreciation, it stops being funny. But sadly, Sony did not understand that. Uh, nothing, nothing really, just, uh, I don't know. That's when we knew it was dead. That's the day the Morbius meme died, but they weren't ready to let it go. You know what Morbin Time fans don't seem to like? Jared Leto. And that's what should have been obvious to them. This movement literally exists to make fun of the movie, not make a fun experience out of the movie. And even though the original box office run clearly indicated that, Sony still thought, hmm, you know what we should do? Get theaters to play our shit movie a second time, where it bombed again. And the internet, being what it is, tried to start a petition to get them to put it back in a third time by being like, look, we just weren't ready for round two, but we swear, you do it again, we'll turn up this time. Thankfully, Hopefully they didn't, they were already trying to mass rush the production of the DVD and Blu-ray into stores so they could start making those sales and get the digital run up. But it was such a clear indication that Sony just like doesn't get it. Every now and again they make something genuinely incredible but then they just don't get it. I'm sure there was a way to translate the memes into getting people into seats, but it probably would have taken some kind of incentive. I feel like with Minions, they could have actually made like Gentle Minions Nights and really like steered into like the theme and it might have curbed some of the more like rowdy behavior if everyone just felt like it was a thing they were a part of. But like, what were they gonna do with Morbius? Sit through our shit ass movie and pay for the pleasure of doing so so we can make another shit ass Spider-Man spinoff. And I can't hate on them too much. They made my baby, but I also know their meddling ruined so much of my baby. I'm sure there are a lot of other factors, but I really just think that the main one is that one of these movies was the butt of the joke and the other was the facilitator of the joke. You can't have a gentle minions movement if no one goes to see the movie, but you can absolutely clown on a failing movie by not going. In fact, that's kind of required. <laughs> Better luck next time, Sony. Which I guess brings us into the movie, which was thankfully pretty cute, did not hate my experience watching it. It's simple, not as good as Despicable Me, but a nice little origin story. So we're gonna go into like the full breakdown and spoilers, so if you were, were really holding out for catching minions, this might be where you wanna hop off. We got an 11 year old Drew getting invited to try out to replace his favorite member of his favorite villain troupe, but they obviously laugh him out once they realize he's 11, not that 11. So while they're distracted, he steals their Zodiac stone to prove that he does have what it takes to be a villain, but then Otto trades it for a pet rock. Otto is a new minion. Uh, we know this because he's like rounder and has braces. Uh, nice to see that Gru provides dental. That's real. I don't even provide myself dental. But the rock has googly eyes, so I'll allow it. And I also guess that uh, googly eyed stones are in this year. And I consider this a, a second link to everything everywhere all at once. That pet rock is joy. I did enjoy the escape chase scene here. I am a big fan of this villain nun, as I mentioned, and I just, I laughed really hard when she got slammed by a station wagon. Like this is peak comedy, unironically. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's something wrong with me, but I thought that was really good. Also, the guy who was working the register at Criminal Records, which I thought was like a really clever title. It's like a record store, but then underground there's, it's like a villain lair. I thought, 
I thought that was cool. Uh, either way, he helps Gru escape. That is a young Dr. Nefario. It's all connected. Move aside, MCU. But someone else was planning to steal the stone as well. The original leader of the Vicious Six who they betrayed, Wild Knuckles. So his gang obviously followed Gru. They nab him when he tries to go get the stone back and take him to San Francisco. See, you'd think they'd check to see if he had it on him before driving all the way to a different city. Like, what if it was just down in his lair? and now you have to go all the way back. Crew is also a little bit of a dick here. He fires all the minions when Otto traded the stone. Like, I get it, but all of them? Like, you're lucky that these are dedicated little fucks because they immediately start working on a plan to save you. And they apparently only have 48 hours to do it before Knuckles kills Gru. Not that, Knuckles. This isn't an epic universal crossover. Yet. Minions cross over with Sonic sometime in the next, like, 10 years, like, I guarantee it. So when Otto retraces his steps back to the kid that he traded the stone to, they find out that they gave it to his uncle who just took off on a motorcycle ride conveniently right down the coast towards San Francisco, so Otto takes off after him on a pedal trike. And Kevin, Bob, and Stuart decide to hijack a plane to San Francisco. I've seen some Interesting jokes surrounding that that I will not put in this video, but rest assured, people are having fun. Either way, they all eventually get to San Francisco. Otto catches up with the uncle who just gives him the stone, no real questions asked, and gives him a ride down to San Francisco. Kevin Stewart and Bob actually manage to find their way to Knuckles' house, but they get chased off by the henchmen and then saved by Michelle Yeoh. It's not actually her. Uh, she's not playing herself in this movie. Like, it is her voice. Um, I just think it's important to highlight her name because this is her year. But she's so good in the way of kung fu that they seek out her training. Sadly, I feel like a lot of these fun elements were underused. Like, this just felt like a little mini side quest and it could have been used so much more. But the movie itself just feels like a series of connected side missions over a cohesive unit. While all this is going on, Knuckles' goons quit on him because he hasn't been able to pay them, so he and Gru start to actually bond. He starts teaching and grew the ways of being a villain, grew saves his life, they steal the Mona Lisa, you know, normal bro shit. And all that was really fun and I thought that was gonna like account for a good chunk of this movie, uh, but then I realized the movie was almost done. Which means working into the conclusion time. By now, the Vicious Six have realized that Knuckles is still alive and nabbed Gru, and assume he has the stone so they head to his house, destroy it, which kills Knuckles' villain Mojo and he sends Gru away. Which is when he meets back up with Otto, gets the stone, but the Vicious Six descend and nab it, using it to turn themselves into super-powered versions of the animals on the Chinese Zodiac to defeat the anti-Villain League agents who are also added into the mix. So they lay them out pretty fast, and because they're villains, even though they have the stone, they tie Gru to a clock tower to be pulled apart. Brutal. Don't worry though, Otto saves him just in time, redeeming himself for falling in love with a pet rock. Obviously, Knuckles turns up to save the day from the baddies because there has to be a good guy, bad guy, in the villains movie. He teams up with Kevin Stewart and Bob who with their newfound training, they lay out five of the vicious six while Knuckles is going toe to toe with the leader, Bellbottom. Lots of fun names here. Either way, he does defeat her, but ends up badly injured. Which is when it cuts to what appears to be Knuckles' funeral, but he was just faking it to avoid going to jail, as you do. Then there's the mid credit scene where Gru hires Dr. Nefario, and the rest is history. Until I'm sure they slam in another prequel, you know, I gotta keep those universal rides relevant. But yeah, that's the movie. It wasn't complete trash, and uh, honestly, I think it would have been more entertaining to the lore of the Gentle Minion story if it had been trash and people were just still turning out in droves, but I'm happy that it's decent and likely to hit strong with the intended audience. This is a perfectly adequate movie that has some pretty fun moments, so if the kids are enjoying it, that's all that matters. Except some of the kids are really not happy because select groups of mostly teenage boys are little shit, so uh, as long as that calms down, it's a win for everyone. But let me know what you guys are thinking down below. Are you a fan of the Minions? Or did you like Despicable Me? Have you been off the Minions wagon? Did this bring you back on? Uh, are you a gentle minion or are you just here for funsies? Either way, I appreciate you. So thank you all so much for watching. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters with a special thank you to my latest Jedi Knight level patron, Lauren B. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a like on the video if you're into that kind of thing. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm mostly okay. We'll catch you all later.